but we will go to the board. But there's a couple other questions that a bunch of old ladies been asking me, and I'd like to certainly ask you gentlemen. Okay. Uh, do you all believe in collecting tithes? Yes. Tithes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there a verse in the New Testament that dictates the New Testament churches and the people that are Christian to collect tithes? I believe so. Wait, could you show it to me? We simply can't find things when we want to all the time, so just take your time. I have time. I'm a very patient man. I've been looking for that for years. So if it, uh, you all can show it to me, I'm willing to wait. Now, while I'm looking for it, um, the question is, do you all believe also in tithes? Yes, we do. Okay. And so by us, by it not stating it in the New Testament, what are you saying? Well, first it, of I mean, all, I'm just saying well, I'll tell you exactly, Testament, I'll tell you exactly what, you what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. The only people, the only church that the mighty Yahweh ever gave the authority to collect tithes is the house of Israel. And he also, and that is a law, that we collect tithes, pay tithes, and use tithes that are be, to be allocated for certain particular people to be able to eat and be filled. And the people that the Almighty allocated to be recipients of the tithes were the fatherless, the widow, the stranger, and the Levite that are within our gates, that they may come and eat. Now, I hear Christian churches teach that we're not under the law. Nobody can keep the law. And as you said, uh, we're under grace. If this is so, who gave you the authority to collect tithes? Christ didn't. His disciples did not collect tithes. The apostles did not collect tithes. As a matter of fact, nobody in the whole entire New Testament collected tithes. But y'all reach back in the Holy Scriptures and grab that law and use that law to take advantage of the widows and the followers. But you have no dictation from your, your authority. Christ never gave you the authority to collect tithes. He never collected nor his disciple. And I'm telling you that you indicted by the Creator for falsifying the scriptures to collect tithes. You're telling me when the apostles uh, collected uh, items from all of their, uh, all of the followers to support the widows and so on and so forth, uh, they unlawfully did that? No, what I'm saying, sir, that? what I'm saying, the disciples, the apostles never did collect tithes. Never. There's not a verse in your Bible. And I'm glad the people are listening on the radio because I want them to go back and ask their preachers to justify the authority that he has to collect tithes. They're wrong. And this is the reason most ministers will not come on a show with me because they know I'm going to ask these questions. And when I ask them, they're going to have to bring it to task. But you fellows are very, I'm, I'm, I give everybody the benefit of a doubt. And I'm going to assume that you're willing to serve the Almighty more so than to serve the dictations of the various doctrines of your church. Many ministers are willing to put the doctrines over, of their church over the word of the Almighty. But I believe that you are sincere, that you're dedicated, and once you see these things, you will take them to task. And I'm saying there is no authority in the New Testament to collect tithes whatsoever. Now, I will say this. Considering that you, this is your show, of course, you have a format and formulated questions that you intend to ask, that you, uh, that you already have information or studied on, whereas we are spontaneous. Uh, we have to spontaneously respond to some of your questions. Now, if we were to simply come in with a format or questions to present to you um, with a, a set of preparation, then that would uh, cause you to have to respond spontaneously to what we're asking. So the issue with the ties, uh, even if I can't refer to it or go to it right now, uh, I guarantee you 
the next time, if you have me back on your show, I will have a explanation to the tithes issue, the tithes and offering issue. Well, I assure you, if you come back again, you will give me an explanation, but the explanation will not be justified by scriptures. Okay. I assure you that. And like you said, I've studied the whole book, and I prepare myself to talk about anything pertaining to the word of the Almighty at any time. I, I, I studied the whole book, and I was trained by the Most High to teach the whole book, and I was teaching your book to, to let you know that uh, the head elder of your church that has been collecting tithes from you all and having you all collect tithes is in error. He's in error. It's not justifiable. The book condemns it. It's totally justifiable. Uh, the um, Give me some scriptures then. Well, Melchizedek uh, collected the tithes, and this was before the law. And so uh, it's in order that we collect tithes. It, the, um, the scriptures talk about Melchizedek. Melchizedek was a priest that was before uh, the, the uh, Jewish order came about. And so we keep that because that was uh, away from the law. That's the, has nothing to do with the law. We keep that because that is God's command, and it had nothing to do with keeping the Sabbath day or those Ten Commandments. It was before the Ten Commandments. So that is why we keep that. Well, let me address that. Uh, <clears throat> your, as far as the tithes are concerned, the Sabbath day, murdering, and all the other commandments, before we had a written law, we had an oral law. And then the written law became part of the Torah. And once we had the all, the written written law, all the laws that were in the oral law are part of the written law today. Prove that. Uh, yes, I can prove it because I can prove the, the law of tithes. And you can find that in the book of Deuteronomy, the 14th chapter. But that's not proving that, though. Yes, well, if you what proves that, by studying the Bible seriously, you'll find out that uh, the tithes, were before the Sabbath day. That's what I said. You, and you would find out the dietary law, even before the dietary law, the Creator told uh, uh, Enoch, uh, Noah rather, to bring seven pair of clean animals in a ark and two pair of unclean. Now, he would not have known how to do this had he not been familiar with the dietary law. And if but he had I, did that, that then was, we wouldn't have no unclean let, animals anyway. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me finish. The point is, is that they had all the laws, and uh, the Almighty made the tithes a part of his law, just as he did the Sabbath day that they were keeping before the law, too. And I don't see your church keeping the seven-day Sabbath, saying, well, this was done before the law. I don't see your church only worshiping Yahweh because this was done before the law. So there's a lot of laws that they were doing that you all still don't do to this day, and they were done before the written law was set up. So you're so saying that's that not, you all keep every aspect of the law. Then, but right? Jesus said he was uh, the fulfillment uh, of the Sabbath. Uh, well, then how do you fulfill not committing adultery, sir? How did he fulfill that? How do you fulfill not? We yes. still do not no. commit adultery. Yeah, we still well, do well, not. Well, the point it is, that's the law. Yeah, okay. Well, so if problem. the law is done away with, then you wouldn't be, it wouldn't be binding. Okay, the well, then that's the reason why we have yes, teachings sir. in the New Testament that show us things that we're not supposed to do. If you look at the Word of God, you'll see that the moral part of the law is still, still kept dead. intact. Yeah, still well, the dietary sense. part of the law, Jesus done away with, the Spirit <laughs> of God done away with, Acts, what my brother Kevin was talking about, when the Spirit <laughs> told uh, Peter, arise, slay, and eat. If you read that scripture, you'll find out he was worrying about eating unclean things. So I'm very familiar with Acts the 10th and 11th chapter, but the thing that you're not familiar with is that a little while ago that you said Christ is the Almighty. He is. So you're saying that, but then you also agree that me, that Christ supposed to be the same today, yesterday, and forever. Yes, That's he right. is. Now, if he's the same yes, yesterday, today, and forever, the Almighty stated in the book of Isaiah that the first thing he's going to do when he comes to earth is destroy every person he catch eating pork. Okay, sure. I yes, that. sure. That's in the book of but Isaiah. Even if you do well, no, 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 I mean, that's I mean, a different dispensation. No, no, you no. have to understand the dispensation. But your dispensation true. is he's the same today, yesterday, and forever. Yeah, he is the same <laughs> yesterday, today, well, and forever. But there was a time before Jesus, and there was a time it, after oh, Jesus. So, yeah. But see, there was never a time before Yahweh. No, there was see, never a Jesus, time before, before the most Before Jesus high walked on the earth, there's a time. Well, and before Jesus came and walked on the earth, there's a time. Well, and, be, and after he walked on the well, earth, there was never, a time. there was never a time before Yah. No, and Jesus right, was Yah. Well, but there's a time Yah, of him walking, he, there's a time of his manifestation, and there's a time of him in his well, spirit me, form, which is God. Let me read this first. Let's go and to I can prove that to you if you give me time. Let, let me, let me, 
please. Let me read the scripture please, that show you this. Let's go to Isaiah, the 66th chapter, please. And let me back up this about the dietary law, about the, what the creator said he's going to do when he come back. In the book of Isaiah, the 66th chapter, would you start reading at the 17th verse? They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens, behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh, and the abomination, and the mouse, shall be consumed together, said Yah. So the Almighty said the first thing he's doing when he come back to earth and destroy everybody he catch eating pig. And you would like to say, well, he changed now. That was only for that dispensation. But the Creator in the book of Malachi, the third chapter, said, I am Yah, I change not. The book of Isaiah, the 40th chapter, 8, verse says, The grass withers, the flower faded, but the word of I, Elohim, shall stand forever. The book of Ecclesiastes 3 and 14, it said, I know that whatsoever Elohim does, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it, and he does it that men can fear before him. The Almighty does not change.